Okay, is everybody ready? This is a slam on the tree, but I have to tell you. Okay, so we're going to continue. Thank you so much. We're going to continue. Uh, we're on volume uh, 34, 520, 1936. So we'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of all saints. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're continuing with volume 34, 5, 20, 19, 36. My blessed daughter, Louisa, there is not one trait of my life that does not symbolize the kingdom of my divine will. So everything that Jesus did from his birth to his, you know, hidden life, to his, his life talking to the apostles, to his crucifixion, death and resurrection. Not one trait of my life does that symbolize the king of my divine will. On this day, this is the day of the ascension, I felt victorious and triumphant. My pains were now ended, or rather, I was leaving my pains already suffered in the midst of my children, leaving them on earth as help, as strength, as support. So everything that Jesus went through is helping us to get through this life. And as a refuge for them in which to hide in their pains. In order to draw from my pains the heroism and their sacrifices, I can say that I left my pains, my examples, and my very life as seeds that maturing and growing would sprout the kingdom of my divine will. On this day of my ascension, I received double, the double crown, the crown of my children, whom I was taking with me to the celestial fatherland and the crown of my children whom I was leaving on earth. These two symbol of the few who would form the beginning of the kingdom of my divine will. So it's, Jesus says it'll be very, very few at first because what's so glorious needs sacrifice. And what we are called to sacrifice is our worry, our fear, our anxiety, our complaints, our negativity, our doubts. So all those who saw me ascended to heaven received many graces such as that all of them laid down their lives in order to make known the kingdom of redemption and laid the foundations on which to form my holy church. So as to gather in a maternal bosom, all of the human generations, past, present, and future. In the same way, the first children of the kingdom of my divine will shall be few. So it's not, this is not for everybody. Why? It takes the sacrifice of sacrifices. No more worry, no more fear. No, oh, but you don't understand, Father. I've got to worry about my children. And you can't go into the kingdom at this point. I mean, that's got to be sacrificed. But you don't understand, Father. We have no money. Then you can't get into the kingdom. I'm sorry, you need a couple bucks to get in there. <laughs> yeah, it, it. So, so what we sacrifice is worry, fear, anxiety, complaint, second. This is, this is where the human will is. Why is there such doom and gloom all around us? Because it's misery. That's the human will. And Jesus says, to live in the divine will, you have to give it up. No more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity, no more doubts to no more sin. He says, that's why there's only going to be a few. I mean, you get, you get calls on the phone. My, my brother told me this when my mom died. He was home and I was on the phone talking to people. And he says, do you know what you say all day? And I said, no, what do I say? I don't know, I'm in trouble, my brothers. <laughs> and he says, you're always telling everybody, it's gonna be okay, God's, God's got plans. It's gonna be okay, stop worrying, it's gonna be. He says, you tell everybody to stop worrying. The, the, which says to me, you can't get it, you can't live in the kingdom if you're worried about anything. Your health, your money, your finances, your children, your children have to be consecrated to Jesus and Mary. If they're not consecrated, I would worry. But if you consecrated him to the Lord, he's going to take care of it. Our Lady's going to take care of it. You've got, what did Jesus say to St. Faustina? The final devotion I give to my church before I return is divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. 
it's going to get really, really bumpy. And if you don't trust the Lord, you're going to scream and panic like everybody else. We're going to be confident in God, trusting in God, hope in God. Christian hope is certitude. That we have to, if you want the kingdom, stop worrying. Stop being anxious. Stop complaining. I thought complaining was a gift God gave me. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't like it. I thought I was using it to the best of my ability. <laughs> so so this, the few who would form the beginning of this kingdom, that, that's each and every one of us. And what is, what is the sacrifice we're making? We're, we're going to die to become alive with peace, joy, and happiness. No more worry, no more fear. Everything's falling apart. God's gonna, God's in control. Everything's gonna be crashed. God's, God's in control. There's gonna be a nuclear war. God's in control. It, it, there's nothing to be afraid of. Remember, remember uh, the, the, the priests in, uh, in uh, Hiroshima, dead center under the explosion. They all survived with no radiation. You have to understand, uh, look, let's look at Maui. The only things that did, weren't destroyed were the things that were colored blue out of the blue mantle of Mary. Jesus was showing us, doesn't matter if there's a fire raging around you, you will not be harmed. It's the blue mantle of Mary. Are you consecrated to her? Are you consecrated to the Lord? We're going to do the consecration to the angels. So this is something that's very important. If you want to know more, go to Opus Centaurum and you learn the work of the holy angels. Again, great things are coming and we're going to be working with the angels. So Jesus says, there's the few who formed the beginning of the kingdom of my divine will. All of those who saw me ascended to heaven, listen to this, received many graces such that all of them laid their down their lives in order to make known the kingdom of redemption and laid the foundations to form my holy church. So as to gather in a maternal bosom all the human generations in the same way, the first children of the kingdom shall be few because they can't stop worrying. You don't understand. You don't, I don't understand. I mean, you have to understand. God says to the apostles, does worry at one moment to your life? And he says, of course it does. And then he says, stop worrying. A command from Jesus Christ himself. Oh, but you don't understand, Father. See, worry says to Jesus, he's not a good God. And we insult him by worrying. So stop it. And you, you've got to treat yourself. One of the things that like Pope St. Norman Jalon, the work of the Holy Angels, they say to the angels, beat me as you would a stubborn mule. What, how do you get a stubborn mule to be, to move? You kick it and you slap it and you, until it starts moving. And it'll bite you. But it's, a, it's the same thing here. Jesus, I need you need to save my me. You need to say, I was going to say something else. You need to save me. It is, it is kind of funny. I gotta be. So in the same way, the first children of the kingdom of my divine will shall be few, but the graces with which they shall be invested shall be such and so great that they shall lay down their lives in order to call everyone to live into this holy kingdom. Them. A cloud, see, cloud means power and mystery. A cloud of light invested me, moved my presence from the sight of my disciples, who remained as though ecstatic in contemplating my person. For the enchantment of my divine beauty was such as to keep their pupils enraptured, enraptured so much so that they were unable to lower them in order to look at the earth. In fact, it took an angel to stir them and have them return to the cynical. This too is a symbol of the kingdom of my divine will, the light that shall invest the first children. Like I said, the, the, the evil one sees this light in you and they hate it. They know it's the light of Jesus and Mary. And it's not full blast at this point, but they're, they're gonna try to, to hurt you in a way so that you will not want Jesus. So our job is to be consecrated to the sacred heart of Jesus, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, be consecrated to our angels, especially the sealing of the sealing of the angels that we're going to do on March 4th uh, on, on Louisa's 77th anniversary of her entrance into heaven. We're going to ask to be sealed and sealing is a, is a brand. 
we're going to be branded by the angels. And, and uh, a great, this is a great, uh, a great to belong to God, to belong to the angels. You know, it's, this is great, what's coming. Don't be afraid. Nothing to be afraid of. He says, uh, very, very clearly, they shall invest the first children and be so great that they shall bring the divine beauty, the divine enchantment, the divine peace of my divine fiat in such a way that humanity shall easily surrender. Your family is going to easily surrender to God. Guaranteed. Your prayers, the, the tears of a, of a mother, the prayers of a father and mother are powerful. To, to wanting to know and to and love so great a good is this gift of gifts. Now, in the midst of the disciples, there was my mama who was present at my departure into heaven. And this is the most beautiful symbol, Mary. She indeed is the queen of my holy church. She attends, she attends to her. The church attends to Mary, the holy church, protects the holy church, defends the holy church. She shall sit in the midst of the children of my divine will. This is the divine will. Mary in charge. She shall be the engine, the life, the guide, the perfect model, the teacher of the kingdom of the divine fiat. Our lady is so greatly cherishes her and hers are longings and ardent desires and delirium of material maternal love for our lady wants her children on earth in the same kingdom where she lives. Our lady is not content with only having her children in heaven in the kingdom of the divine will, but she wants her children on earth. She feels that the task given to her by God as mother and queen, she is not yet fulfilled and that her mission is not ended until the divine will reigns on earth as it is in the midst of humanity. She wants her children to be like her and to possess this divine inheritance of her of their mother. Therefore, the great lady is all eyes to look, all hearts to love, all to help whomever she sees, as she says here, um, somehow disposed to wanting to live in the king divine will, the kingdom of the divine will. So she's looking to see your fiat. That's what she's doing. Is there any way that you can look like Mary? Well, the one way you can is the fiat. Yes, Lord, let it be done as you say. This somehow being disposed to wanting to live in the divine world. So then in the difficulties, think our lady is all around you, sustaining you, fortifying you, taking your human will into her eternal hands to let it receive the life of the supreme fiat. 534, 531, 1936. In all my baby tears, wailing, praying, prayers and sighing, I called with my tears, called with my sighs, my divine will into the tears, into the pains, into the size of the size of humanity. Are they the Lord? Every tear that we've ever had is usually a self-pity tear. Pity, pity me. Jesus says, I cried for you. I, I longed for you to turn away from the world, the flesh, and the devil, to enter into the Father, life of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. She says very clearly, so that they might do nothing in which would, they would not feel the divine strength of the empire of my divine will reign in them. That move to pity by my tears and by their tears would give them the grace of return to, of this kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Adam was created with the creative power of my fiat. Adam was born. Adam was needed. Adam was, Adam was soaked in the divine will. My divine will administer to him continuously warmth, light, and he and he shall end his fallen life. See, what's coming is the kingdom. That fallen life of Adam is coming to an end. You see why people don't want to hear this? It's the kingdom is coming. All those people that invested in the earth, the world, the flesh, and the devil, that's all going to be going, going the way of the world. The way of the world is fire. The fire is coming. That's the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of Mary. The fire of the divine love of Jesus and Mary is going to consume the world in love. There's nothing to be afraid of. If you're not with God, I'd be terrified. Because 
That's wailing and grinding of teeth because that's hell for eternity. We don't want that. We want Jesus. We, we go to the sacraments. We, we embrace the sacramentals. I mean, it, it, God has given us everything. He's, it's very, very clear. Uh, he says, right, he, he shall end his fallen life in the fiat. Yeah, who knows this fiat? Who is grateful to the divine act so continuous, never tiring, tiring, enveloping with such, with so much love of the life of the creature in order to give her life? Almost no one, my daughter. To do good, to be the primary cause of a con conversation, giving perennial life to the creature, to maintain the order of all created things around her and only for her sake and not to be recognized. This is the sorrow of sorrows. See, God has done everything. And the patience of my will gives of the incredible. But do you know the reason for this patience so invincible and constant? Because the, the patience of God knows that the kingdom shall come and its life palpitating in the midst of humanity shall be recognized. And in view of the great glory, it shall receive in being known as life of each life. See, this is, this is what's so glorious. The kingdom is coming. The kingdom is coming. And while it is life, it shall receive each life in order to reign in them. It shall no longer remain hidden, but it shall be unveiled. Un and it'll be unveiled and recognized. In view of this, it bears such great lack of recognition that and only a divine patience could tolerate the length of so many centuries of such great in human ingratitude. That's, that's where we've been. Jesus said, Adam fell from such a height that it was a miracle that he survived. And we're going around going, I'm pretty good, I know what I'm doing. No, it's, God, is, God alone is good. God alone is holy. See, the, the three promises to Abraham that we pray every day in, in the canticle of Zechariah is to be freed from the enemy. Jesus freed us from the devil. The next, the second promise, free to worship God without fear. Each of us received Holy Communion in the state of grace, and none of us are afraid. We, we had God reigning in us. We were in communion with God. God for that 15 minutes. None of us were afraid. The second promise to Abraham has been fulfilled. The third promise to Abraham is to become holy and righteous in God's sight all the days of our life. Who's holy? God. Who's righteous? God. And this is what he tells Louisa. He says, what the saints have taught, taught us is how to have God. God is our temple and we are in that temple. Jesus says in the divine will, he says, uh, no, no. <laughs> what the saints have been taught is we are the temple and God is in us. In the divine will, Jesus says, God is the temple and we are the living host in that temple. The Eucharistic reign of Jesus is we become living hosts. The triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is we begin to live true life of Jesus and Mary. That's her triumph. We're very close to what God is going to give to the world. And he just said it. Everybody's going to see it. See it. They're, they're going to recognize it. It's going to be unveiled. So he says, only with a divine pace, patience could, could tolerate the length of so many centuries of such great human gratitude. So he says, my holy humanity kept retracing step by step all the sorrows that my divine will had, had suffered in order to repair and call back again to reign in the midst of the human family. Jesus says, I can say that each of my heartbeats, each of my breaths, each of my words, each of my steps, my pains, was a continuous calling of my divine will to make it known by humanity in order to reign. It has also called them into my will to let them know the great good, the divine sanctity, the divine happiness of living in the fiat. 
And it was necessary to make myself known so that my coming upon earth would not be useless for them. Oh, how many public life, how my public life symbolizes the triumph of the kingdom of my fiat in the midst of humanity that I, Jesus, shall make known by means of surprising truths and, and in order to obtain the intent, I, God, listen to this, will perform miracles and prodigies with the power of my divine will. And I shall call back to life those who are dead to grace. He's going to do that for everybody. Your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. What's the only thing in the way is your doubt. That's, it's, don't doubt. Jesus, I place my family in your hands. And this is what he said to Louisa. You do what I want, I'll do what you want. There's no fear. There's no anxiety. There's no complaints. There's no negativity. It's praise and glory to God. Ask, believe that you have received it, and it is yours, Jesus said to his apostles. Now he says, I'm going to give you prodigies unheard of. We haven't seen anything yet. I shall repeat the miracle of resurrection of Lazarus, even though they had become putrid in their evil, rendering as sticking cadavers like Lazarus. My fiat shall call them back to life. My fiat shall make the stench of sin cease. This is God's promise. It shall make them rise again to good to God. In some, I, Jesus, shall use all of my divine industries to have my divine will dominate in the midst of peoples. There's nothing to be afraid of. God is going to do this. This is his promise. And all he asks of us is, do you believe I, I will do this? And when we say yes, he goes, good. It's the same thing that happened to the woman who was hemorrhaging for 18 years. She said, if I could touch the tassel of his garment, this is the, the tassel of, uh, on, on the prayer shawl. Because in Leviticus, it says the Messiah will heal by his tassel, by his hem of his prayer shawl. So when she touched it, Jesus said, who did this? He knew who did it. And they said, well, well, there's all these people. What do you mean who did it? And he, he looked, he, he, you know, like he didn't know. And he said, why did you do this? And what does it say? She explained everything to him. You are the Messiah, she said, and I know you can heal me. And then what does Jesus say? It's your faith that has healed you. It's the same thing today. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you trust in him? Do you have confidence in him? Can you say fiat? Can you learn how to say fiat in all situations? Yeah, this is what Jesus is asking. He says, I, God, will use all of my divine industries to have my divine will dominate in the midst of the peoples. My holy humanity, humanity lacerated, beaded up to death, crucified, represented the unhappy humanity without my divine will before the divine justice of God. And in each pain, I, Jesus, called my fiat to exchange the kiss of peace with humanity in order to render them happy. And I called them into the divine will to make them sorrowful, make the sorrowful passion of my divine will cease. Let's look at this what he's saying. His divine will is in agony because we're not embracing the kingdom. We're not saying yes. It's, it's, he says, finally, my death that matured the resurrection that called everyone to rise again in my divine fiat. Oh, how vividly does my resurrection symbolize the kingdom of my divine will. My holy humanity, wounded, deformed, unrecognizable, rose again, whole and of an enchanting beauty, glorious and triumphant. Comfort, and it prepared the triumph and the glory for my divine will, calling everyone into the divine will, infiltrating that everyone might rise again in my volition, rise from the dead of the human will, alive from ugly to beautiful, from unhappy to happy. My risen humanity ensured that the kingdom of my divine will upon earth, it was only, it was my only act full of triumph, my only act full of victory. And this befitted me because I, Jesus, 
did not want to depart for heaven without first providing all the aids to humanity for them to re-enter into the kingdom of my divine will, as well as all the glory, all the honor, all the triumph to my supreme fiat to let the divine will dominate and reign. Just think about this. We've been, we've been lied to by dominion. And Jesus says, I am going to be your divine. See, it's, it's very clear this is for today. Therefore, unite yourself with me and let, let there be no act that you do, no pain that you suffer that does not call my divine will to take its royal and do dominating place and conquer everything as the winner, to make itself known, to make itself loved, and to make itself wanted by everyone, past, present, and future. Everything's going to change. Everything is. 534, 74, 1936. Now, if my divine will had given you the freedom to let your human will act, even in the smallest and most innocent, thing, in innocent things, it would not have been able to form your Jesus in you. I cannot, nor I, do I want to live of a human will, nor would my holy divine will have taken on the commitment of forming me in your soul it had it not been certain that I would find my own divine will and animated by my own my own holy humanity. Its kingdom on earth shall be precisely this, to form as many Jesuses for as many humans as want to live of divine will. That's the triumphantly make of the heart of Mary. We become like her son, 30, 60, or 100 fold. Whatever you want. This is not about being good and holy and saintly. It's to share in divinity. This, we've got to make that leap to believe this. And once we make that leap, it's a piece of cake. Everything. It's just, it's so easy. Why? You know Jesus is with you. So with Jesus and the souls of its kingdom, shall its sumptuousness, its splendor, its magnificence of blindness, its omnipotent opulence, things unheard of, the divine will shall be secure. We're never going to lose this. Never going to lose this. Then, in the kingdom of my divine will, shall I, Jesus, have as many living Jesuses that love me and glorify me and shall give me complete glory. This is why I, as God, so much long for this kingdom and you too you must long for it and and that's the thing that just we just got done longing for the kingdom of god we have to have that zeal we have to have that fervor of this kingdom we jesus says i'm waiting for souls to want the divine will more than anything and occupy yourself with nothing else let me do trust me and i shall take care of everything God's in charge. 534, 2, 10, 1937. I felt all immersed in the divine volition. It seemed to me that heaven and earth are longing and praying for the coming of the kingdom upon earth so that one may be the will of all and it may reign on earth as it does in heaven. Louisa, my daughter, daughter of my volition, listen to me. Jesus is the word. Listen, he will speak to you as you read. You won't hear him with your ears but you'll hear him with your heart. My love is about to submerge me. I can no longer contain it. At, and at any cost, even it should overwhelm heaven and earth, I, God, want my divine will to come to reign upon earth. And to this, unite, united with my heavenly mother, who without ever ceasing says to me, repeats to me, son, hurry, delay no more. Use your stratagem of love. Act as the powerful God that you are. Let your divine will invest everyone and with its power, majesty, together with a love that no one shall ever be able to resist. Possession of all and reign on earth as it does in heaven. This is Mary's prayer. This has to be our prayer as well. Hurry, Lord. And she says this to me with such ardent sighs, with flaming heartbeats, and her strategies is the love of, of a mother, such that I, God, cannot resist the blessed mother. To the point of adding, my son, my son, 
You make me queen and mother and my people and my children, where are they? And if I were capable of unhappiness, I would be the most unhappy queen and mother because I possess my kingdom, but I do not have my people that would live of the same will as their queen. And if I don't have my children to whom to entrust the great inheritance of their mother, where shall I find the divine joy, the divine happiness of maternity? Therefore, let your divine fiat reign. Then shall your mother be happy. And I shall have my people, I shall have my children who shall live together with me with the same will as their mother. This is her, this is what she's longing for. This is her triumph. The divine will reign in their children. At that moment, I felt the Blessed Mother near me, hiding me under her azure mantle, under the blue mantle of Mary, hide under it. And just remember what happened in, in uh, Hawaii. Nothing blue was consumed. Again, that was a sign that God says, go to my mother. It's going to get tough, but go to my mother and you'll be protected. Hold on to me on a maternal lap with a love I cannot express. She said to me, daughter of my maternal heart, the kingdom of the divine will shall be my kingdom. And to me, the Sanctuary Sanct the Trinity entrusted it. Just as they entrusted to me the eternal word, Jesus, when he descended from heaven to earth, so did they entrust to me their kingdom and mine. Therefore, my yearning is ardent. My prayers are incessant. I do nothing other than assault to storm the most holy trinity with my love, with my rights of queen and of mother that they give me so that what they entrusted to me may come out to the light and may they triumph on the face of the earth. I feel as if I had no glory. While I have so much of it in heaven and, and on earth, we are filled with it. If I do not see the children of the kingdom of my divine will formed in it, the, in the midst of my children, because each of these children that shall live in the divine will shall give me so much glory as to redouble the glory that I already possess in heaven. You see what God's waiting for? So seeing myself deprived of it, I feel as if I did not have the glory of queen, the love of mother from my children. This is why in my immaculate heart, I call constantly and I keep repeating, my children, my children, come to your mom. Love me as your mother. And as I love you as my children, if you don't, this is what he says, if you don't live of the same will from which I live, you cannot give me the love of true children, nor can you get to know the extent of my love for you. You must know that my love and my ardent longings for this kingdom to exist on earth is so great that I descend from heaven. I go around from soul to soul to see who is more disposed to live of divine will. I secretly keep on watch on them. And when I see them disposed, I enter into their hearts and I form my life in them as preparation, as honor, as the quorum of that fiat that shall take possession of them and shall form its life in them. Therefore, I shall be inseparable from them. I shall place my love, my life, my virtues, my sorrows at their disposal as a wall of insurmountable fortitude. The devil will never be able to cross. That they may find in their mother whatever is needed in order to live in this kingdom so holy. Then shall my feast be complete. The triumph of the immaculate heart of Mary. My love shall rest in my children. My paternity shall find those souls who love me as children of mine. And I shall give surprising graces and I shall put all of heaven, all of earth in feast. And I shall act as queen, lavishing unheard of graces upon my children. Unheard of prodigies upon us. Therefore, my daughter, remain united with your mama that you may pray and long with me for the kingdom of my divine will. Divine 34, 314, 1937. My will is life and knows how to operate 
or do nothing if, if it does not generate life. You see what's coming? This is abundant life. Jesus says, I, I go to heaven to give you life, to give you up to you abundantly. That's what's coming. Nor can it help but doing so. And now each additional act that is done in the divine world, that's what we learn to do our acts and our rounds uh, of creation and redemption. It encloses the generative act it possesses. And the creature, by doing her act, uh, speaking, dancing, singing, uh, your eyes blinking, uh, limping, whatever you want to do, whatever you do, lends to it the veil in which to form and hide this divine birth of Jesus and Mary. This is not human anymore. It's the prayer prayed by the priest every day of Holy Mass, putting the drop of water in the chalice, and we share in the divinity of Christ, as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. It's not about being good and holy and saintly. That was for the saints. It's to share in divinity. See, that not becoming gods, but being God's image and likeness. This is what's coming. It's a divine birth. And the, as the act is performed, so does my divine will go around the whole world in order to find the souls who are most or are more disposed and to deposit in them the birth it is generated from the act, the human act. Image and likeness. That likeness is to do what God does. Jesus, breathe in my breathing. You take a breath. Jesus is breathing in your breathing. He takes us at our word. That's the divine act that Jesus is doing in us. Jesus, beat in my heart beating. That's Jesus beating in your heart beating. So you're going to experience this. You're going to experience Jesus beating in your heart beating. You're going to experience Jesus breathing in your breathing. You're, no, you, you're going to know it's not you. Jesus walk in my walking. You're going to experience Jesus walking in your walking. You're going to know it's not you. It's a, it's a birth that is generated, forming one more child of the kingdom of its fiat. See then what one more act is to form one more child in my kingdom. Therefore, the more acts that are done in the divine world, the more that you learn how to do the, pray the rounds of creation, rounds of redemption, and, and everything that you think, say, and do in the divine world, the more populated shall the kingdom of my divine world be. My daughter, this is the delirium of our supreme being, that we, trying God, want the souls to live in our divine will. We, trying God, shall use all our devices of love in order to obtain our intent. God's going to get his way. The devil's going to be gone. I mean, you have to understand, when the kingdom of God comes on earth and is in heaven, the devil who's been banished from heaven will be banished from earth. We ain't seen nothing yet. What's coming is so going to be so magnificent. I mean, there's no eye, no eye has seen, no ear has heard what, what God is going to do for those who love him. And he's calling us to love him in the divine will. We want, the triumph God wants humanity to live in our divine will. And we, triumph God, shall use all our devices of love in order to obtain our intent. It's going to happen. How beautiful it is to see that our first children of our fiat shall serve with their acts to form, listen to this, the new generation of a life in our divine will, in the creature, in humanity, in each and every one of us. Our love is so great, Jesus says, that we take the occasion of the act, the eye blink, the swallow, the step of the soul in order in order to give this great good that encloses both heaven and earth. This, the saints longed for this, but they were not given it. They didn't have Louisa. We were predestined to be alive at this time till God would give us Louisa. He's expecting an awful lot from us. He's expecting more from us than from all the saints combined. Why? They did things human way. 
Jesus is saying to us, I want you to do everything the way I did and my mother did, a divine way. This is, this is a great time to be alive. It's, it's an amazing time to be alive. So he says, my divine will is like a tender mother who feels within her the long generation of her lives that she wants to issue to the daylight. She wants to give birth to this and to form for herself the long generation of her children who must form her kingdom. And therefore, my divine will keeps looking for those souls, that's us, hopefully, who would lend it in their acts, who say yes. It's all it is, is yes, beyond. Volume 34, 4, 8, 1937. Now, I want to tell you, Lisa, why I am still keeping you on earth and, and why he's keeping us on earth. You know that our divine will is immense, and that the creature lacks the capacity, the creature lacks the space to be able to embrace all of this divinity altogether. Therefore, it is more suitable for the soul to take it sip by sip. It's a word by word that Jesus teaches us in the book, Book of Heaven. And you take them, now when you do your acts in my divine will, now when it manifests to you a new truth that belongs to it, and if, if you pray, if, if you desire for my kingdom to come, if, if you suffer in order to obtain it, these are all sips that expand your capacity and forms the space in which to enclose the sips of the divine will. It's all if. Some people say, well, I'm living in the divine will. How do you read? I don't read too much. I'm living in the divine will. Well, I said, no, you're not. You're not praying. You're not suffering. You're not obtaining. You don't have the capacity to, to expand. You, you're fooling yourself. See, that's when the illumination of conscience comes, let me just tell you, let me just tell you, <laughs> it's going to be awful. It's going to be awful. Most people think they're pretty good. People come to confession to me and go, bless me, Father, I have sinned. I've been pretty good. Well, wow, let me get that kneel down and adore you. It's, 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 what have you, see, we're going to see every sin is like a stone thrown into a pond. We're going to see the rippling effect, and listen to this, that's affected all of humanity. And it's going to be awful. Because God alone is holy. God alone is good. And when we stand before the Lord and we're going to fall right on our face. We won't be able to stand. He is so holy. He is so beautiful. He is so perfect. He is so loving. From us, or we would die of ecstasy. And, and he's going to show us who we are. And we're miserable human beings. I have been pretty good this week. <laughs> you know, it's... You see, when you, when you go to confession, it's sifting stones. You might not have the big boulders, but you got a lot, you got a hundred now smaller rocks. And then you sift, and then you got a thousand smaller rocks. Then you sift, and you got 10,000 even smaller rocks. And then you sift, and then you're pure, pure dirt. That's the purity God wants. I mean, it's, it's, you really got to examine your, your conscience. And you, if you do it every night, it's good. Because then in your prayer, you can say to the Lord, have mercy on me, have mercy on all my brothers and sisters, past, present, and future. God will listen to that prayer. And he will answer that prayer. And all our brothers and sisters will be ready for this great triumph that's coming. Don't, don't, don't give up on anybody. Just keep on praying with confidence to God. So this is what he says. Okay, we got, all right, where, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay. Um, okay, we'll just do a couple more lines here. A couple more lines here. That sounds like something. Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> I gotta live, I gotta live with this brain, you know. So. I'm always cracking myself up. What are you saying? What are you doing? Okay. 
And while you do this, you come to enclose, listen to this, one generation, now another, that must possess the kingdom of the divine fiat. He says, now you must know that since the generations are like one family, such that all have the right to the inheritance of the Father, the divine inheritance of the Father, everyone has that right. And we pray for everyone. Like men. They form one single body, which I am, Jesus says, the head. And when the members does something good, it obtains and possesses it. All the other members acquire the right to do it and to possess that good. Now, if you have not yet enclosed all those human generations that must possess my divine will is life, therefore, more is needed of the chains of your acts, the, the chains of your insistence, the chains of your pains so as to drink more sips in order to form the space to give the right to those who want in it so might possess my kingdom and as soon as you have done the last act that is needed immediately i shall take you in the celestial fatherland which means we haven't accomplished what god wants us to at this point and once louisa was done she went and down God's got great plans for all of us. And he, he, all he needs us to do is to say fiat. And the sooner that we can say fiat and to live in the divine will, that really the happier we're going to be. And I think we're going to do the uh, chaplet now. Right. Who's, who's leading the chaplet? Okay, great, thank you.